Hey, hey, I'm Shay Warner, and you are listening to Casual Cattle Conversations. If you are ready to explore different management practices and focus on improving your operation and the beef industry, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited you are listening. Hey, hey, folks, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Casual Cattle Conversations. I'm excited to have you back and appreciate having you as a listener. Today, we are going to be diving into herd health with Gary Bosch, who is joining us from the MedGene team. And we are going to be talking about platform vaccine technology. So Gary is going to explain what platform vaccines are, how they differ from maybe the traditional vaccines that you're using, and how they are being applied in the beef industry today, what they can do for cow-calf producers, pros and cons to using them compared to maybe your traditional approach, and just talk about some good herd health strategies in general. So this is a quick episode. It's very informative and just jam-packed with a lot of great tips from Gary and knowledge that he shares over his years of experience. So before we dive into that, I do want to remind you to rate and review the show on your favorite listening app. That not only helps me, but it helps more people find the show. Also share a link. It's easy to share a link with someone else who might find this episode valuable. You're not just helping me, you're helping other people as well find this information. So with that, let's visit with Gary. All right, Gary. Well, I appreciate you joining me for this conversation today. This is a new topic for the show. We've talked herd health and other ways, but we have not talked about platform vaccines before. So I'm excited to bring this new topic to my audience and hear a little bit about your background in the beef industry, as well as MedGene and what you guys all do. But before we dive into all of that, I don't want to jump the gun. I want to hear a little bit more about you and your background in the beef industry and what you're doing today. Well, hi, Shane, and thanks for having me. It's it's great to be on your podcast here. Uh, happy to talk to the cattle producers and your audience here. Um, I, my name is Gary Bosch, Dr. Gary Bosch. I'm a veterinarian. Um, I uh, have been, you know, in the animal health industry for, well, 40-some years now, so quite a while. And if you count my time in, uh, that I grew up on the farm, I, I'd say it's a little longer than that, too. Uh, but yeah, I I, um, I practiced veterinary medicine for about 11 years. I ran out of veterinary school and uh, did a lot of work with cattle producers uh, in that time and, and then joined uh, the industry and, and joined in, as uh, a technical service veterinarian for a vaccine company. So I've been involved in vaccines, pharmaceuticals, uh, animal health uh, in general in the cattle industry for, for quite a long time. Uh, worked with a lot of cattle producers, worked with a lot of veterinarians who serve cattle producers too. So can you tell me a little bit about the company you're working for today, MedGene? Like what, what does your company do? Yeah, uh, MedGene is a, is a startup company, a startup vaccine, bio, biologicals, whatever, you, however you refer to them. Uh, but we are a biotechnology company uh, producing platform, what we call prescription platform vaccines, and it's a new class of vaccines that was uh, that was uh, you know brought about by the USDA. USDA was looking for ways to better serve or more quickly serve the uh, the veterinary industry and the cattle producers as well. Uh, and what they did was they created a, a another form of vaccine. They call prescription platform vaccines. So MedGene is dedicated to or dedicated to that type of vaccine. And what we do there is we produce that vaccine in a in a very modern way, uh, where we um, take a gene and insert it into a baculovirus. And a baculovirus, simply stated, is a is a harmless, uh, non-infectious virus from insects that lends itself to um, being able to put the genes out of uh, viruses that come from cattle and being able to produce it and then go into a laboratory and produce the vaccines from uh, from those genes of interest or those genes from the infecting viruses. So MedGene is dedicated to that new vaccine called prescription platform vaccines. Okay, so can we dive into a little bit more 
on just the basic level of what are these these prescription platform vaccines and can you maybe share like an example of how they're being applied for cow calf producers today yes yeah, so um the prescription platform starts off as that we have to get a, a fully licensed vaccine from the usda which we have done uh, so we've got a fully licensed manufacturing process and so the manufacturing process stays the same but what we do is we uh and swap out or change the gene inserts in that baculovirus to develop vaccines such as rotavirus, coronavirus, influenza D virus, we can do BVD virus. Uh, so we can manufacture uh, different vaccines and these will be modern strains of, of these viruses and the vaccines. So like the rota corona uh, vaccine in uh, cattle, for instance, that is used uh, to protect uh, calves from uh, calf scours. Uh, a lot of those vaccines were made oh, over 20 years ago. And so those viruses have changed since then. And so what we do is we find the modern or the viruses that are current in the cattle herd today, and we're able to take those genes and get a modern a modernized vaccine to the producer so that we have uh, a greater chance of, of uh, covering those diseases in those in those cattle so that's in essence and how what the prescription does now the prescription in its name uh, says right away you have to have a veterinarian involved so the veterinarian is the key to collecting the samples where we find the sequences that go into our vaccines. So those come from herds. Uh, and once we have those inserted into or made those vaccines, um, the veterinarian can, can then use that vaccine wherever he has a veterinary client patient relationship. <laughs> in other words, wherever he see fit, sees fit in his practice, he can use that vaccine. So uh, it, it's very, um, very easy for him to be able to develop what I call a regional or practice vaccine that will uh, enable him to um, help all of the cattle producers that he works with. So these vaccines, they're not necessarily tailored to specific operations, but more on a regional level? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's it's more regionalized. It, it is can be very specific to an operation, uh, but it, when we do what we call the bio, the surveillance or the diagnostic surveillance around the country, we find uh, you know common viruses, the common strains of virus that are currently in the in the country or in the region or in that particular herd, and so we can dive down as as close as exactly what's in that herd or we can compare what's in the herd to everything else that we know is out there and really make kind of a more regional vaccine so we have what we call bioinformatics and bioinformatics just says we can compare to all the viruses out there so let's take for instance if it's a coronavirus a respiratory coronavirus mm -hmm. All of the viruses that ever been have ever gone through a diagnostic laboratory, we can access those gene sequences and compare those to what we're getting out of a specific herd. And if you know there's a, a, an opportunity to make a general vaccine for a region, we can do that, or we can be very specific on a herd. So, what was the driving force or purpose behind starting to develop these? The platform vaccines. Yeah, that's that's a great question, and I think uh, Alan Young, a uh, professor at, at South Dakota State University, was co-founder there, and his vision for this technology originally was foreign animal diseases. So the driving force there was to be able to react quickly to any foreign animal disease that might enter into the United States, and this was a this platform was a was a quick way to do that, uh, but with that, but once you see that capability, now you understand that there's other viruses out there that have changed, or other viruses that have emerged uh, in the in the cattle and swine industries uh, together 
that you can apply this technology there. So the so the the birth of it was to really respond quickly to foreign animal disease, but the expansion of that was it's a very useful technology in a lot of different areas where an unmet need for for protection against viruses. So is this, you know, this vaccine technology, is it something that's been adopted and well used by other livestock species and is now more so entering the beef space or did it all kind of come about at the same time? What's the adoption look like in the beef industry compared to other livestock industries? Well, the uh, the adoption in the beef industry is 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 growing, I'd say it, just, it really started to grow rapidly now. Uh, we first entered into uh, the, the market on, with a swine vaccine, right? So that, but we quickly also can take that into other species. So cattle were on our radar screen from the beginning. And it's, so it's not a, a, an afterthought. I think it's a, it's a very well thought out plan to be able to go to multiple species with the technology and so swine and cattle were really our first entries into the into the livestock area uh, with this technology so we really have put together a team to grow the, the the vaccine or the knowledge of the vaccine in the cattle industry and we continue to grow that team and we continue to bring on uh, new uh, uh, veterinarians into our, into our customer base and expand into the cattle industry. So you've talked about how really one of the benefits of this technology is that the strains are more current compared to maybe traditional vaccination options or vaccine options. What are other benefits of cattle producers using this or inquiring about to their veterinarians with any questions, like what are the other benefits of using platform vaccines? Well, um, the big benefit besides this, the, the modern strains, I think is the speed with which you can get that vaccine into your herd. So like if you needed to create a new commercial vaccine, it takes you know five years and a lot of money for a company to do that. For us to be able to do that, we can just re change out the gene insert in there, so it's and and have that vaccine to you in a matter of you know months instead of years. So the the answer to the question that you're asking is the big benefit is the speed with which you can get a vaccine into your hands when you need it, uh, and it's and it's got the viruses in it that are from your herd or from your region. Plus, it will have things in it that you cannot get in a commercial vaccine, uh, such as we can do a, a influenza, for instance, influenza D is a, an arising virus in cattle respiratory disease. We can You can't really get that in a commercial vaccine. Uh, the coronaviruses uh, are maybe out there, but we, we're, we're uh, probably focused on the coronavirus. And then another one we that we've had uh, a lot of interest in because there's an unmet need is bovine papillomavirus, which is <laughs> warts, you know, uh, in, in cattle. So there's, you're looking at the opportunity to create combinations and have viruses in there that are serving unmet needs right now. So that's what the, the big reason to use it is because we can get you a vaccine that may not be available in a commercial vaccine. So what allows you to have such a, so much of a quicker turnaround time, you know, a few months versus years? Yeah, the, uh, the key is the, the ability. We don't need the whole virus to make a vaccine. We just need a, a short piece of the genetic material from that virus, the one that keys for immunity. So this, the speed comes from just being able to take genes in and out of that vacuolar virus and still have a licensed Platform. So our original license for a vaccine for that to get the vaccine platform license did take that five year that that three to five year period. It did take that long to get that, but once we've got that, now we can move genes in and out of that, which creates the speed uh, that you know is really needed when you're trying to respond to a disease in a herd. So what's the difference between the 
baculovirus vaccines that you're talking about and mRNA vaccines? Yeah, that's uh, it's a good question. And I know that mRNA is, is one that gets talked about a lot. Ours is different. So in a nutshell, I guess what I'd say is mRNA vaccine, when you inject that, it it um, the host or the animal you inject it into uses that mRNA and, and, it's, and it goes into the cells of the animal to produce, and the cells produce this um, protein or what, what we call the antigenic protein, which then the cell breaks apart and that protein is released into the animal. And that's what the immune system responds to. So the, I would say that that's the bioreactor. The animal is the bioreactor that creates the immun immunogenic protein from that mRNA. That's mRNA. Baculovirus, on the other hand, we insert the gene or the RNA, the gene material into that baculovirus, and then we produce the antigenic protein or the protein that the immune system responds to in, in our laboratory, in our manufacturing facility. So the difference, big difference is, is that in one hand, the animal itself is the manufacturing for mRNA, manufactures the antigenic protein, and on in the baculovirus system, uh, we manufacture the antigenic protein in our in our laboratory. Okay, so thank you for explaining that because I know that's like you said that's kind of been a topic, or the mRNA side has been a little bit of a hot topic over the past few months. Now I want to kind of ask a question about, well, it's a question about questions in the sense, and it's something I ask a lot of my guests, and that's what questions do cattle producers need to be asking themselves to determine if this might be more of an option for looking into? Because on the herd health side, sometimes, I mean, change can always be scary, but if you have a system that appears to be working, you know, it's you kind of get to get stuck in the well, if it's not broke, don't fix it mentality. So what questions do cattle producers need to be asking to determine if this might be a better option for them? Well, you're right. In a lot of cases, if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix it is um, the way, the way things work. I mean, that, and I would be the same way. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But uh, one of the things that happens is we don't we don't know that it's going to break mm -hmm. until it breaks. Where the thing that I want to impress upon cattle producers is to um, start doing more uh, surveillance, what I would call more surveillance of what is going on in my herd from a uh, virus or bacteria. What what what's there? And to do that, you have to do diagnostics, and I, and I think. Diagnostic surveillance may be one of the things that's missing in most herd health programs. Uh, and today, I mean, ten you know years ago, uh, it was it was pretty cumbersome to do. But today, with uh, what we call PCR polymerase chain reaction, diagno PCR diagnostics, and next generation sequencing. Uh, which a lot of the veterinary diagnostic labs or the state vet labs are doing, uh, lends itself very, very nicely to surveillance because you can get those samples from nasal swab or a blood sample or whatever whatever is needed or a, or a scour sample. And you can send those in and you can get answers pretty quickly. And you can, you can also take samples from healthy animals. And you can do surveillance on your herd to find out what's there because they can do big panels and look for different all the different kinds of viruses that are in your herd, uh, in those herds. So it's it lends itself quite nicely uh, to modern cattle production and herd health there uh, because diagnostic surveillance I think should should be integrated into into those herds into those herd health programs. Well, I really appreciate you bringing that to light, especially the, we don't know when it's going to break and how important it is to just be cognizant and always doing surveillance on our herd and neighboring herds and talking to other people and keeping a close relationship with our veterinarians to see what's going on and happening in the herd health space. So with that, I kind of like your perspective on that from a herd health standpoint, 
what do cattle producers really need to be keeping a close eye on when you think about, you know, currently and maybe in the future? Well, I, I, you know, from my perspective on herd health, there's, there's some key points. Uh, yeah. And number one is a good relationship with your veterinarian is, 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 is uh, you identified already. Uh, another t one on the herd health side is, is your nutrition. So nutrition and, uh, and disease status of your herd are, are two key elements for keeping your herd healthy. So if I was, if I was to tell any of the cattle producers, make sure you have a good relationship with your nutritionist, make sure you have a good relationship with your, uh, with your veterinarian. And, and then the third piece of that herd health program is the diagnostics and the diagnostic surveillance. Uh, I think that you need to be aware that, for instance, rotaviruses have changed quite dramatically over the years. So if coronaviruses, uh, some of the vaccines you may be using may be okay. Um, and then again, they may not. And you don't know that until things start to break down on you. But if you were to, you know, during your calving season, for instance, if you were just to take some, um, have your veterinarian take a few nasal swabs from your calves or some fecal swabs from your calves, uh, you might be able to identify something that's in your herd that you didn't even know about and is starting to cause maybe a few calves to scour. Uh, and maybe the following year you have more calves scouring or you have more calves with respiratory disease uh, later on. Uh, same way with with the feedlot, you may be have something circulating in the feed, in your feedlot or in your stalkers that you weren't aware of, uh, that may be is going to be a consistent or a more more problem more of a problem. And coronavirus, influenza, D virus changes those those viruses change. There's other viruses that change too. BBD virus can change. So. Although your, your vaccine program, like you said, ain't broke right now, you want to have an idea of if it might break. And you don't have to change anything. Uh, and, and a lot of things don't change until, until something breaks down. Um, but it'd be good to be ready. It'd be good to be ready. Risk Get management. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Gary. So as we kind of wrap up the conversation today, where would you encourage cattle producers or those who are listening to this episode to go to learn more about either the topic or your company? Where can they go to learn more? Well, my suggestion, first of all, to, to learn more, to read more on your own, would be go to uh, www.medgenelabs.com. And uh, it's just like it sounds uh, and spelled. There's a lot of information there about... Uh, on the cattle side, on, on what we do, uh, on how our manufacturing works and how our processes work with how we interact with the veterinarian. Uh, all of that is included there. You, there's a lot of contact information there. So if you want to talk to a person, uh, there's, you know, we have some uh, regional salespeople out there. We have some veterinarians in the field that have contact information there. Or you can just call, call our, our customer service number and, and uh, they can direct you where you need to go. So we have lots of channels that you can that you can find out more about us. We also can be, we're also on LinkedIn if anybody's on LinkedIn and at least we have a Facebook page too. So we're on social media, uh, just take a look for us. All right, and I will include those links in the show notes of this episode as well for anyone who's listening. And Gary, with that, thank you for joining me for this conversation today. I really appreciated it. Thank you. And it's good to talk to you, Shane. Well, folks, that's a wrap on that one. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Like Gary said, if you want more information, you can head to their website just to learn more about the topic of platform vaccines and who MedGene is as a company, just to familiar, familiarize yourself a little more about the topic. That website link is in the show notes, so you can just scroll right to the bottom of your listening app right now and find that right away. Have a great day and remember to rate and review your favorite podcasts because that is one of the best ways to help us grow. See you folks.